Alright guys, welcome back to episode 7 of Men of Steel with me, Franny Get Your Gun. It has been a long, long summer and probably the main reason is that in FM17 I've been quite enjoying the challenge of actually having attribute masking on for the first time in a very long time. But when you're at this level and you've got kind of shitty scouts and your player and youngster knowledge is 2, oh god it makes it difficult. It makes it so difficult to find out what players are like at anything. It's ridiculous. But we got there in the end. It is the 5th of August. Our first league game of the new season is today. Look at this table of titans that we're going to be up against. Skelmersdale, Stafford, Whitby, Met Police, Matlock, Ilkeston, Co-op Travel, Greenwich. So I'm very excited to get underway. We have got, who have we got? Gressley at home. So, you know, we come up to a new league and we play a team that we played fucking last season because Gressley won our division. But before we get to that, I have got plenty to tell you about. So, so first things first, let me just get this out of the way. Lee Hendry is no longer affiliated with Sheffield FC. He was not interested in anything except for maybe like a, an under 18s manager under 23s manager and the board won't let us have either of those because we're a tiny fucking club so hendry had no interest in anything else so we have parted ways very sad and i was looking around for star names to replace him i was like oh who can we who can we get in that's you know that can cause a bit of excitement stir it up a bit to be honest it was very slim pickings in terms of playing players so I decided to turn to an old teammate of mine that you've seen already at least six times in this series. Tyler takes the free kick quickly, Solano. Bellamy, beaten out by Bartes. And that was Woodgate trying to finish it off. And Genus! Genus by name, genius by nature. That's right, it's Jermaine Genus. Jermaine Genus joins the coaching staff. He's he's a bit of a star name. He was a wonder kid in his time. For anyone who doesn't remember Mr. Genus, he started out of Forest, moved to Newcastle, where he was seen as a bit of a wonder kid. Got quite a few games for England as well. Then he moved to Tottenham, and he did okay for a while, and then the injuries started setting in, and his career was sort of brought to a, a slow a slow death as he, he moved back to Forest on loan and then QPR. But yeah, it's it's one of these sad stories where he, he was a good player, he had potential to be a great player, but just injuries. Injuries crocked him. So he joins our coaching staff, very glad to have him alongside me. And maybe, just maybe, he can set me up for success like he does in the intro. So, excellent. So moving on. The other players we've let go are Simon Greenwood, Liam Royals, the shit right back, James. Oh, sorry about that, Jamie. Oh, it's because he's gone. He's gone to Northwood. So this plays every time he opens his profile, like a fucking birthday card with a speaker inside it. Yeah, Jamie Hatfield's gone. <laughs> Lee Cook, oh it happens for him as well, excellent, Lee Cooks is also gone, let's get off that, and young midfielder Brian Penny's gone, don't think we even talked about him, so yeah, don't worry about that one. And finally, Brandon Potts left, do you remember what happened with Ben Turner in my very first episode? He left on a non-contract to join another club, and we just got him straight back, because we can do that, because we're semi-professional, and we have non-contracts and shit. So yeah, that's what happened with Brandon Potts. He moved to Nantwich on a free and was given a hero's welcome the next day when we got him back. <laughs> so in terms of other signings, we'll start from the back and move forward. Connor Williamson is the first one. He is a, a good centre-back, good tackling and marking, decent physical stats. Might struggle jumping for the ball and his mental stats overall aren't the best, but he is still very young. And my scouts think he puts everyone else to shame. They think he is miles ahead of them, so I will take that. I should mention, because of the difficulties I was having with attribute masking, not being able to see any players' attributes, I mainly signed players off their stats last season. So, in terms of Connor Williamson, I was looking at like tackles per game and average rating and stuff like that. 
Uh, Connor Williamson got 2.21 tackles per game, 6.87 average rating. And he played for Romulus as well. He played for Romulus, who finished 20th. And he got uh, he got pretty decent stats. So, so, yeah, I thought I'd give him the opportunity to be in a struggling club, but in a higher division, which is very exciting for him, I'm sure. But, yeah, excited for Connor. Joining Connor in the centre of defence then, to replace Hadfield and Cooksey, it's Ryan Qualter. I remember sort of laughing at his name when we played Shaw Lane last season. We bought him from Shaw Lane where he got a 7.11 average, four goals, four player of the match awards. Um, yeah, and that was in a team that finished 12th as well. So not bad at all, Ryan Qualter. He, I think, will complement Connor Williamson quite well because his physical stats are very, very good. He's pretty quick for this level. He's got an excellent jumping reach and mentally is a bit more put together as well. So him and Williamson, I think, will be a very good partnership. Do you remember Steve Woolley? I'm guessing probably not. Steve Woolley is the fan favourite that was interviewed after we won promotion and he said he was pleasantly surprised for us. Steve Woolley has declared that he had not expected the club to be promoted and was pleasantly surprised. Is that all we get, Steve? Pleasantly surprised? But we have signed him up. He's a utility player. We got him for nothing on a non-contract from Worksop. He made 108 appearances over three years between 2010 and 2013, so the fans have got a lot of love for him. And yeah, I think his best position is out on the left wing, but he can also play at centre mid, at left back as well, although his defending stats just leave so much to be desired, so we probably won't play him there. But yeah, Steve Woolley, he was playing in a lower division last season, but he scored six goals, got six assists, and average 1.75 tackles per game so not bad at all Steve Woolley welcome back the next player is Jason Pope and Jason Pope is the player that I've been searching for since I started this save <laughs> a proper proper bastard in midfield he can tackle he's got decent mental stats decent marking decent technique and first touch as well and good physical stats as well he is a battler in the central midfield. He can only play centre midfield at the minute. He can't play in the holding man role, but I am training him up for that. We signed him from Kidsgrove, the team we played first last season. He averaged 2.66 tackles per game, got four goals and two assists over the season as Kidsgrove finished ninth. So pretty decent, pretty decent for a defensive midfielder, I think. And from Carlton, who finished 14th, we have signed Antonio Wedderburn. And I know what you're probably thinking, looking at these attributes. He's not very good at all. <laughs> he's He's got a bit of pace, but that's pretty much it, isn't it? It is, but he is pretty versatile. He can play on either wing or kind of on the sides of midfield. And look at these stats. Carlton finished 14th last season. And yet he scored 24 goals and got 5 assists in 35 games, picking up an average rating of 7.21. That is not bad at all. I don't know how he does it with these attributes, but that is bloody good. So he's, yeah, he'll be a work in progress, I think, but he is a proven goal scorer at the level below. So I'm hoping he'll be able to make the step up. Quite quite optimistic about Wedderburn's chances, yeah. And joining him up front will be Jordan Ball, who we signed from Loughborough Dynamo. Loughborough finished second. They got knocked out in the playoffs. Um, Jordan Ball played 42 times, scored 25, assisted 11 times, and got nine Player of the Match awards, averaging 7.25. So very good stats, and he nearly, very, very nearly fired his team to promotion. So very excited about him. And last... But by no means least, he's back. The kid is back in town. Billy the Kid Cresswell. He's actually our record signing. <laughs> we paid £1.4,000 for him. So he's our record signing. Our previous record was 1000 I think. But yeah, he's, he's back from Potter's Bar, where he played most of last season. He didn't do great. He averaged 6.6, .6, assisted 6 goals and scored 1 himself. But I saw the opportunity to get him back. We've got a bit of pulling power now we're in the league above Potter's Bar. 
And yeah, I think he can still be a decent squad player. And he might even turn out to be more than that. But at the minute, I think he's going to be a squad player. But yeah, Billy the Kid is back. Bit of bad news though. Ollie Ryan, our top scorer last season, and the man who put us through that semi-final, playoff semi-final, he's out for, well, I think he was put out for about three months right at the start of pre-season. But he's still got another seven to nine weeks to go which isn't great so we've not got our best striker so we're hoping that either Ball or Clifton or Wedderburn or someone can step up and replace those goals but a bit of good news to balance that out Alex East who will be starting on the right wing this season he has been named the captain he's the captain of Sheffield FC to be honest I, I don't like the idea of making a 17 year old captain but I thought we've got no one better I want him to be in my team for years to come. Why not? Why not just take the plunge, give him the armband now, and let it give him a boost? He's the kind of player who it will give a boost. He'll be able to deal with that expectancy. So Alex East is the new captain. Jason Pope is the vice captain. The uh, the new ball winning midfielder. He's the vice captain. Decent bit of leadership and not much determination. That's what ruled him out of the actual captaincy. And just in case you forgot as well, Jake Turner is still with us, the uh, goalkeeper we signed in January. Attribute-wise, he is a lot better than Baldrick, but he is severely lacking match sharpness. So is Baldrick, to be fair, but I feel like Baldrick's form at the end of last season has done enough to convince me that he should start this season and Jake Turner should have to oust Baldrick. Jake Turner shouldn't just be walking into this squad, he should have to oust our established at this point keeper Baldrick so yeah Baldrick will start in goal for this game this is the same 4-1-2-3 pretty much that we ended the season with we've switched to a slightly deeper line because we do have slightly faster centre backs now but we still don't want them getting caught out position as they definitely will anyway but <laughs> moving on Baldrick in goal across the back Ben Sampaio because Ben Turner is not yet ready for first team football Colin Williamson, the new signing, Ryan Qualter, the new signing, and Daniel Smalley, they'll play across the back. New signing, Jason Pope in that ball-winning midfield role, Jennings and Potts in the centre, Captain East and Gary Thomas on the wings, with new signing Jordan Ball up front. He is best suited to a target man, but I feel like he's still got the attributes. Let me show you, he's still got the attributes to play an advance forward. I don't think he's that far off, apart from maybe his anticipation. So we're getting him to work on that. But yes, he will start up front as an advanced forward. Let's see how this goes then, shall we? Okay, interesting. I was told that Gressley would be lining up with a 4-3-3 narrow. They're actually playing a, this 4-4-2 with the two deep-lying central midfielders. Okay, so I'm, I'm happier with that. I'm, I'm more confident in being able to deal with that. I didn't want our two new centre-backs to be facing a... A narrow front three, that would that would not have been the best. We're pretty dominant over Gressley at the minute. Gressley, who won our division last season. Saying that, they have just won the ball from us. And they look like they're going for the counter-attack. But Ben Sampaio cuts it out. It's all right. Pope to Leroy Jennings. Have a go, Leroy. He's hit the bloody bar. Jesus, what an effort. I didn't think he was actually going to shoot. Have we actually had a shot on target yet? We haven't. No one has. Oh, seven now. Okay. Precisely zero on target. And now it's a corner for Gressley. It's whipped in. Vice is unmarked. How have they not scored? <laughs> I think Weiss was unmarked for the header anyway. He smacked it against the bar. Came out to Etheridge about two yards out and he smacked it over. Our corner's whipped in though. Here's Gary Thomas. What can you do? Minute of injury time to go. Here's Pope, the new vice captain. Gary Thomas. Leroy Jennings, Qualter, Qualter's hit the post, our new centre back, oh. my god what an even game, half time then, and that, that was a bit of an exciting half that, it's been pretty even, we've hit the woodwork twice, they've actually had some shots on target, so merits to both teams attacking play I'd say, keep going and you can still win today, I have faith, and in you, Especially in you, Jordan Ball. Don't get sent off, though. There's a good lad. Continue. 
Ah, he's not been sent off, but he has taken a knock. What's he got? Potential shin injury or a gashed leg. Jordan Ball's debut will be cut short then. He's going to be replaced by Danny Clifton. Yeah, Danny Clifton's going to come on. They're, they're similar players, Clifton and Ball. The difference is Ball scored a lot of goals in the league last season and Clifton didn't. Clifton's got the physical edge, which I think... Uh, Oh, God, it's bounced off Connor Williamson and gone in. Oh, mate, what a debut. 19 years old, making his first appearance for his new club. And he's scored an own goal. Bloody deflections. Here it comes then. Coup hit it to Etheridge, who laid it off for Vice. Oh, it was a shocking shot. Williamson just tapped it in. How are we doing? We've still had one shot on target, which is ridiculous. I'm going to go attacking, say work the ball into the box, and I'm going to say run at defence as well. See if we can get them to scatter a little bit. Alright, nine minutes to go. O'Brien clears it for them. Qualter heads it back. Towering above everyone else on the pitch, Ryan Qualter. Man ship to Melbourne. Melbourne to man ship. Etheridge plays it on for Vice, and Vice has made it too. Oh, and Qualter's at fault this time. Okay. <laughs> First game playing at home against another newly promoted club, and we are losing 2-0. That doesn't bode well, I feel like. Do you know what I mean? I feel like it would have been better if we hadn't lost this. I don't know what I'm doing here, by the way. I think what I'm going to do is... Bring off Pope to be replaced by Jamie Cheatham and bring on Steve Woolley for his second debut to replace Gary Thomas. We're going to have Clifton as an advance forward and East winning the ball high up the pitch. Go on, show me what you can do. I mean, I'm not especially worried about these first few matches because it's been an awful pre season. I forgot to tell you about that. It's been an awful pre season, no one's fit yet. Everyone's still severely lacking match fitness. Yeah, so I think the first few games will just be about getting everyone back up to speed. And then we'll see what we're about. Alex East, I think it's just going to be full time, mate. I'd just leave it there. Yep. Well, a 2-0 loss at home to another newly promoted club. I'm disappointed. Yeah, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think the games are going to get much easier than that, to be fair. Uh, we did dominate it, but we did also lose 2-0. Jordan Ball is out for three to four weeks with a gash lower leg. Debuts were made and Jack Broadhead is back but severely lacking match sharpness. So anyway, that's where I'm going to leave the video for today. This video was just to introduce you to all the new guys and play our first game to get into the season. I'm not sure exactly when my next video will be in terms of the schedule here. But I think what I'll do, I'll try and get everyone up to speed up to match sharpness, wait for people to gel a bit and hopefully for Ollie Ryan to come back from injury and then I will do another video with a few games showing you what the new team can really do. Didn't get to see Billy the Kid Cresswell this video. Disappointing. So please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Please also leave me a comment. You can leave me a comment saying you know who you like the look of out of our new signings, who I shouldn't have got rid of. You can say oh you shouldn't have let Jamie Hadfield go. He was the... Oh, I forgot about that. He, he was the backbone of the team. So yeah, leave me a comment. Go and watch Freddie Adu's save where he's taken over Arsenal as well. He's also done a fantasy draft video where he takes on the avatar of Dr. Benji. Both very good watchers on the Wasted Talent channel. Go watch him. Drop them a like as well. Job done. But apart from that, have a good weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye.